Friends, April 12th, a daily devotional. Again, I know I've been daily, but that's what we called them, so it's today's devotional. I've been reading in Jeremiah this week. And uh, in Jeremiah chapter 2, God is, is bringing charges against Israel. And it's essentially, uh, if you can imagine like a divorce court, he talks about Israel as his bride and how she's been unfaithful. And how he's bringing charges against her because of, of her unfaithfulness to him. And in verse, um, <clears throat> excuse me, verse 11, he says, Has any nation ever traded its gods for new ones, even though they are not gods at all? Yet my people have exchanged their glorious God for worthless idols. That kind of sums up the charge here. He says, Even nations that worship gods that aren't even gods, don't get rid of their false gods to follow other false gods. They, they remain loyal to gods who, who aren't real. And yet, here Israel has a glorious God, has a God that's good, and ha- has a God that's done so much, and they've abandoned him for, in his words, worthless idols. That's the charge. And... Perhaps we think that's just Israel. You know, we don't worship idols, right? We would never exchange a glorious God for worthless idols. And yet, we know that's not true. We know that that there are things every day that we worship, that we live for, that we look for hope in, that are not God. Anytime we look for what we should find in God, in something else, we're worshiping an idol. We're, we're, We're... Asking something worthless in this world to bring us what what only a glorious God can bring us. But it's the next part that really illustrates what we do and how foolish we are. He says, The heavens are shocked at such a thing and shrink back in horror and dismay. For my people have done two evil things. They've abandoned me, the fountain of living water, and they have dug for themselves cracked cisterns that cannot hold water water at all. Two things, two charges, two things that that God's people have done to him in this analogy. They have forsaken God, the spring of living water, and they've dug their own cisterns. They have cisterns that he says can't hold water. Now, this would be a familiar analogy. This is, is like a parable. Every landowner in Judah and Israel would love to have a spring flowing through the property. They would love to have this constant source of water that it's always flowing, it's always there, that they can always count on. But most don't have a spring like that. They would long for it, that would make a property valuable. But if they didn't, they would have to dig a cistern into the hill. And the hills were primarily limestone. So after they would dig this cistern down into the ground, they would have to plaster it with this lime plaster. And then they have to build a mechanism to direct the rainwater into the cistern. So essentially the cistern, it's not a well, it just it's gathering water. But when those cisterns were dug, they would crack eventually. And then when the, the plaster would break away, the water would seep out from the cistern into the ground. And then the farmers without water. That life-giving substance that he desperately needs. So if you, you were had to make a choice, here's two plots of land. One plot has a spring that's always going to be there, that's always going to give you water, that's going to give you everything that you need. Or you can do all this work and dig this cistern and plaster it and build the mechanism to collect the water, and then it's not even going to work It's going to break down and you're going to have to do it over again. What do you choose? Do you take that constant supply of what you need for life? Or do you trust the cistern that's guaranteed to break down and be worthless? God says, my people chose the cistern. They chose what's broken. They chose what is worthless. They had available to them the fountain of living water, and they turned away from that. Now, I believe it's a choice that we make every day. 
We have this spring available to us. We have this living water that's right there. And yet we trust in ourselves, even though we've proven to be broken and worthless in, in changing our lives and bringing ourselves hope. We trust in things in this world, people of this world, the answers of this world. Even though those things have proven to be things that we shouldn't hope in. You have a choice. You can live your life getting the sustenance you need. Spiritually, emotionally, in your heart. From a stream of living water that never runs dry. Who promises if you drink, not only does the stream never go away. But if you drink from this water, you'll never be thirsty again. You'll never want any other water. It will satisfy your every need and desire forever. Or you can keep using the broken, worthless methods of this world that may seem to work for a moment, even though they require a lot of work from you, but always break down and fail you in the end. We have all could have this charge brought against us. Because we've all trusted in worthless idols over a glorious God. But how will you today make that choice to trust in God? And drink from that living water. And find your hope and find your life. And find all that you need in Him. And stop hoping and trusting in the things of this world that aren't working for you. You're sitting there today knowing everything I'm doing isn't working. Everything I'm trusting in is failing me. Everything I try, every medication, every relationship, every answer that I come up with, I keep feeling empty. Your cistern's cracked. Your heart's broken. You're trusting in the worthless things of this world instead of the God who promises to always be there, to always give you what you need, and to give it to you in abundance, overflowing more than you can ever need. Trust in Him today and find what you're looking for.